page 32 and 33 in our textbook, Media and Culture, Communication in the Digital Age, outline the media literacy and critical process. Um, it says, to become literate about media involves striking a balance between taking a critical position and becoming tolerant of diverse forms of expression. It continues saying, the critical process stresses the subtle distinctions between amassing information and becoming media literate. So the full process of becoming and developing a media literate critical perspective involves mastering five overlapping stages. Those five stages are description, analysis, interpretation, evaluation, and engagement. Um, for the purpose of this assignment, I decided to use the MLCP from page 405 in the book and talk about brands and the brands that I personally use and that my family uses and the brands that I'm surrounded by every single day and kind of understand and delve into what that really means. So um, carry on watching if you'd like to go with me on this journey of going through these five stages and talking about branding. The first step in this process is description and that is done by paying close attention, taking notes, and researching the subject under study. Now in this specific case, the subject under study is myself and the products that I use. So for this, I have made a list of some of the products that I commonly buy. Um, these products are the ones that I kind of stay specific to and never really vary from. So for food, I buy Big Spring Mill Flour, Peter Pan Peanut Butter, Morton Salt, Kraft Mayonnaise, Tazo Tea, 8 O'Clock Coffee, and Coffee Mate. Um, for household products, I use Arm & Hammer Baking Soda, Arm & Hammer Clumping Cat Litter, Sharpie, Purex Laundry Detergent, Beneful Dog Food um, made by Purina, Yankee Candle, Pampered Chef, KitchenAid, Rotten Knives, and Mac pro uh, Apple Products. Toiletries and cosmetics, I usually buy Bath & Body Works products, um, Herbal Essences or Miracle 7, um, Dove, Old Spice, 3D or Crest 3D White Toothpaste, Urban Decay, Lorac Pro, Maybelline, and Lush Cosmetics. Um, for clothing and shoes, I buy Nike, Adidas, Coach, American Eagle, Cacique, and Forever 21. And those are just some of the more common household or products and brands that we use um, within my house between myself, my younger brother, and my parents. So, on to the analysis portion. The analysis is about discovering and focusing on significant patterns that emerge from the description stage. So, we just went through all of the products that I use, and so for the analysis, um, you focus on patterns. What I think that they suggest that I'm a practical shopper and I value quality, usability, and affordability. So although not all of the products that I buy are going to be designer or higher end, not all of them are going to be store brand and whatever is just the cheapest. I kind of value getting more bang for your buck, as some might say. And um, that's kind of where the analysis has brought me. After the analysis, you go straight into interpretation. Now the interpretation is asking and answering questions about one's findings. So when I kind of think about the interpretation, I think specifically with these the brands, I think about why, I'm, why do I buy these products? Who has influenced me? And when I think of the influences, they kind of come from two places. One, my parents, specifically my mom, and then two, by endorsements, whether from celebrities or even just from my friends. I often think about these sort of influences as just pure consumerism, and I've never really stopped to think um, and wonder psychologically about why I buy these products. and kind of even like what that means that I how I want to portray myself to society I do focus on society's kind of superficial standards 
but I justify my actions with reason and practicality. It kind of goes back to, you know, getting more bang for your buck, and I don't want to spend too much on a product that I could basically get for the same for a cheaper price, so I kind of, um, I, I feel like I balance myself out between the, um, higher end products and like the mid range products kind of gets a nice balance in there. <clears throat> the next step is evaluation. Evaluation is arriving at a judgment about whether something is good, bad, or mediocre, which involves subordinating one's personal tastes to the critical bigger picture resulting from the first three stages. I like to think about the evaluation stage as what about America? So, when thinking about consumerism, um, I began to look up a lot of articles from, and um, I found an article titled, Consumer Culture Has Replaced Religion from Paul Hanley. In that article he wrote, Today the cultural paradigm that is dominant in many parts of the world and across many cultural systems is consumerism. It is a cultural pattern that leads people to finding meaning, contentment, and acceptance primarily through the consumption of goods and services. While this takes different forms in different cultures, consumerism leads people everywhere to associate high consumption levels with well-being and success. Um, this also kind of brings me to individualism and branding and the effect that the culture sh change, the shift from focusing on everyone to the individual has really changed the way that brands work too. Kevin Maney remarks that the, we used to want the brands that everybody else had. Now we're moving toward mass individualism, which is wanting stuff that nobody has. Our individualism is warping the way that brands are even having to associate with us as consumers. Another point that um, was brought up is the ubiquity in branding. That is basically how I like to think of it is the omnipresence of brands. Brands are literally everywhere. We've seen them for a while be um, used as product placements within movies and even television shows. Um, but now with the new forms of media that are happening, we're also seeing new forms of brand brand integration. So we're seeing brands and product placements throughout music videos, um, and we're also seeing brands and um, product placements within even just regular YouTube vlogs. Um, with those new forms of brand integration, new laws come up and just everything like that. But we're so exposed to branding that nowadays we hardly ever notice it. Um, when really I could look around um, just any room that I'm in and I could see tons of brands and they're feeding into my mind and influencing me to buy them because I see them and you don't even notice it. It's very interesting when you think about it. The last step in the critical process is engagement. This is basically where you take action and make an impact, whether um, something needs to be changed or something just needs to be made aware to the community. Engagement is your chance to fully take your media literacy to the next level and become involved in some way. Specifically for branding, consumerism, and advertising, the topics of discussion for this specific assignment, I definitely recommend going to adbusters.org and to commercialalert.org just so you can find an issue or a cause that you are highly passionate about and that you can get involved with. I definitely have found some on these sites that I am going to be involved with and I think that other people could too.